Welcome to the Jaffa programming tutorial. Um, what we're moving on to is data output stream. So it's creating, it's creating, um, it's like, we're able to write files as an input output in um, Jaffa and out. But what we're going to be passing to the file is not a stream. It is a stream, but it's not a character. Um, it's not a byte. So what we've what been doing is streams of um, bytes and the reader um, of characters and the writer of characters and so on. We had the output stream and input stream. Well this is the same. There you've got output stream and we'll have input stream. And so output is going to put it going to put this to file. But before that we've got data. And what does the data mean? Well, let's see if it says it there. Right. Well, what it is is say you've got integers, strings, bytes, you've got um, floats, you've got doubles, you've got all these primitive. A string's not a primitive type, though. But you've got all these primitive types of data in in the Java language. Now you can write these primitive types to to file. Um, store them in file and then you can read them back from file um, and use them whenever you want so so you can what you can do with them is say that you've got like 200 integers and you're going to close the program and when you start the program again you want these integers to have the same value as when you close the program you can write all these integers to a data um, file so a data out output stream and so what you would do is you would use the data output stream to to send them to the file but in the file it wouldn't be integer if you opened up the file it would be like um, binary all ones and zeros but it appears as characters that's what this is what you'd see and you can see that's all the ASCII code it's right and so so what I've done is the way you do the, the output stream uh, it's only what it's data stream, data output stream. Give it a name, call it DOS equals new data output stream constructor. And inside the constructor, we're going to have a file output stream because we're going to be like sending to a file. And so we don't need a name to access it, so it's just new file output stream and the path of the file. It already exists because I already tested the, the code. Um, and so data.txt exists and so if it didn't it would throw an, uh, <coughs> an in out exception and so what we've done we've created this and then I've done a standard for it int i equal zero int i equal or s so just do the best and 220 keep it simple um, and increment i so it's going to count up um, to 219 which is going to be 220 and it's going to write that number every time it loops to the file one at a time dot slight and so if I run that program that's a program run um, and if I open it again you'll see that it changes every time you write it open data and you can see that's the 219 Integers, all every single one of these represents zero to two hundred and nineteen. And so, what if it changes to twenty? And if I run the program, then open it up again, you'll see it's changed. Now we've only got twenty characters from zero to twenty, um, and so we can change it. And so, if I do zero again, so it's going to be. Like 200, but it's going to go from 0 to 199. And let me think if I run the program, and this will have changed if I open it again. Now you've got 200 different characters. See, that's a space here, and that's a space. So it looks as if there's nothing there, but that a space is a character. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this out. I 
and what we're going to read that data back from the file but it's not going to appear um, as these characters it's going to give us the integer value that we wrote in the first place and so what we're going to do is, is um, we're going to create a data input stream data input stream call it DIS why not and data input stream and constructor and inside this it's inside this it's Inside this is the name of the file, so I'm just going to cut and paste. And it's also the new. I'm just going to cut and paste. Be a little bit lazy. Control C. And I've just cut and paste that in there. And so what I've done is I've created a new file output stream. But this time it's file input. It's the same as when we were doing the the other the like streams. You got out and you got in. So this becomes capital I N input stream, and so that's accepted. And the name where the file is, and we finish this off with a semicolon, and it's got one one bracket missing. So that's. That's us created the object and the file it's going to be directed to and the data input is going to read the information from the file and so what we're going to do is we're going to do a while loop and we're going, we're going to make it a, a boolean um, condition to variable right and so we're going to use that for the, the while loop so while condition and braces right and so while as long as that's true the while loop is going to execute as soon as that turns false it's not going to execute so that's why we've done true. But inside here we're going to say false. Um, I don't think it. Yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to create an int num equals this. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. Dot. And this is the interesting part. We can read int. We can read byte. If we read int, it will be an unsigned int, I think, and so you won't get you won't get the character, the, the original value. So I think it's got to be I think it's got to be a byte. Read int. I think we can do this one here, and we can do this one. Do this one first, um, and take away that and semicolon. And then, then if we do a num, if if num is equal to minus one, that's minus one is the end of file. So what we're saying is, if this is end of file, we don't need the braces because it's just one command. But I'm just going to put it in anyway, so you can see it's embedded in the code. And so condition equals false so you can see what I've done there so when it's minus one that means it's the end of file and the while loop's going to stop it's going to stop looping because this is false this is true it's looping and when it becomes false it's going to stop looping and it's going to move forward so we should be able to run this. Keep the fingers crossed, and it should be okay. Yeah, what we didn't do though, we didn't print. Yeah. No, I'm not 
to show where to put system print. I think we'll put it here. And what we want to print is num. So this is going to equal the value inside inside the, the, the file and we're going to print it to screen. So if if I done the program, what we have got and we have to we still have the minus one. So I was trying to avoid the minus one. It's the end of file and it stopped the end of file. It stopped ripping. And so if I I probably have to put that if statement at the beginning um at the beginning of the while loop. I'm not sure the in, the num could be outside the while loop. I don't want to talk too much anyway, so let's see. So you can see that it's counted from zero. Zero to one nine nine. Uh, and if we open the file, that's two hundred, that's zero to one nine nine nine. It's read every single one of these read every single one of these characters and then converted it into it's converted it into a byte which will go to screen as a number. Right? And so as an integer. Um, and so what I'm gonna do the boss one called read int and we're gonna see if this will return integer. No. So, so that's an unsigned. Um, so that's I done the right thing. It was. It was read. Let's see, go back. Right. So th this is the right word. read. Read the um, will return the integer. But the reason why you use data input is because. You can um, write floats, you can write um, bulls, you can write integers, you can write bytes to file, and then you can read them back in again to your program as the original value, the original type. So it's very useful. That's me just touching the, the, the basis of it, but that's that's what it's used for. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment just to show you um, just I'm going to uncomment this and we're going to change a file. I'm going to change it um, to 50 instead of 200. So if I run the program and if I run the program, open data. So now that's 50 instead of 2. It doesn't seem like 50, but it is 50. And now if I comment this out, This part and on the program, what we're going to get is 0 to 50. 0 to 50, 49, but it started at 0, so we've got 50 numbers. You can see that we've got original, but that's what we sent to file with these numbers from the for loop, and we've got them back again. And so we, we can use, I'm going to get rid of this minus one at end of file symbol, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to Zero. Just increment it here, and this is right. No, what I was thinking is not going to work, so we'll just leave it there just now. Um, but the good thing is that you can see the minus one. The minus one is what is used for end of file, so you can use this to t as a test condition um, to test for minus one, and so we've used it to stop it from um, continuously ripping or creating an a end of file exception because it's going to stop itself and so so that's data output streams you also get um, object data object I'm not too sure what it's called but you can send whole objects to files and then you can read all the objects back again and so that's that's quite impressive if you find you've got a game with lots of objects when the the user decides uh, 
just if he's going to stop the game or whatever program um, all the objects are safe to file so when it starts back again all the objects are loaded back into memory with the same data as before and um, hey presto the game's the game is, is just where you left off doesn't matter if it's like in between in between the um, levels and where, where you started he's got the same score he's got the same everything and he's happy because he can continue where he left off so so that is quite good and so what we're going to move on we're going to move on to files we're going to look at directories and different things like that so again thank you for your time